live Jason Hello everyone thanks very much for joining us again apologies about technical difficulties and bringing Chrissy on the call delighted to say that Chrissy is here with us now uh, for our first uh, conversation of the evening we will be speaking to Deer Park Stimming Fleming later on Chrissy thank you very much for joining us finally Thanks, Jason. Delighted to finally connect. <laughs> as, as I was saying to Mark earlier, this is the final time we will be referring to you as Chrissy Bourne. Um, I suppose just to congratulate you and Declan on uh, your, your recent wedding. Uh, thanks very much, Jason. Yeah, it was a, a great year, a great finish to a, to a great year. So, yeah, we're both delighted. Thanks, million. I suppose, obviously, with a motivation, always a married woman to try and go out and maybe reset and start again. Yeah. I'm doing my best to continue on from the match play of this year anyway. Continue the momentum. I'll be doing my best anyway. Uh, indeed, Chris, we'll, we'll go back a small bit maybe. Um, I suppose just, just getting Irish number one itself again this year on the ladies, I suppose. Is it nicer to get it after winning a national? Because obviously when you got it in 2019... Your runner up in the two events, then is it a nicer feeling to get it when you win a national? Um, well, it was, it was a great win for me personally in, in race and after coming off three finals in, in the last four, well, in the previous four years. Um, I was I was really delighted to have won in race and it being my home course, and, um, but at the same time. Anytime you finish number one in Ireland, it, it's great. It's a great feeling. To be honest, back in 2019, like, I was very consistent. I did have four four runner-up spots in Ireland, all Ireland to get me to that point as well. So I'm I'm proud of both. Mm -hmm. I suppose, obviously, look, we didn't start playing the sport this year until the 26th of April. Did you take up a club that week, or were you? Was it maybe a few weeks later before you got back playing this year? Um, I it's likely I did play that week. Um, I I was probably waiting for the for the courses to to reopen for lockdown to to end to get out to play. I generally just play weekends anyway. Um, I I missed a competition practice. I I, I enjoy playing the scratch books and um every weekend so. Yeah, getting out of lockdown and getting the clubs back back in the hands and knocking the dust off was was a great feeling. It was a, it was a short and compact season this year, kind of lifted by really, but um, it was a strange year. But it was, it was great to get back, back get back out playing after the lockdown. I suppose obviously Kilbegan was it was it was kind of a strange way to start the year. Obviously finish off what was left over from twenty twenty. I suppose, how, how did you feel after Kilbegan? I know it probably wasn't your best performance, just how did you feel in general? <coughs> yeah, coming, coming after the back of lockdown, uh, very little play, very little competition practice. Um, on the day, I just it, it just didn't happen for me at all. But um, Kilbegan is a course that I play every year. I play every every, uh, every year under Scratch Cup at the beginning of the year. It's a course I know, but just it was one of those days where... where didn't fire in all cylinders, but um, Liz put in a great performance that day, and I was delighted to see her win, win her maiden uh, match play. It was great for pitcher put, it was great for Lady pitcher put that there was a new winner on the cup. I couldn't be happier for Liz. Uh, I suppose, obviously, look, obviously, it's been yourself and Jor battling it out for so long the last few years that obviously Liz and Mark are coming in, I suppose, there and Mary Murray as well. Must say from what Rock Lodge, I suppose there there are a few more that it is isn't just necessarily a straight shoot up between yourself and Jura anymore. No, God, there's plenty of women there that can challenge for any championship on their day. Um, I said Martha and Mary have been kind of knocking on the door for many years. They're great supporters um, of pitch and put. You see Mary from the top of the top of the country to the bottom of the country and um, she's a great supporter of the game. I was delighted to see her see her winning in Rock Lodge. I you know I was very disappointed myself to lose it on the last hole, but um Mary I was delighted to see her to see her come up trumps and, and get that All Ireland under her belt. And uh, Liz again she's been uh, knocking on the door for many years and it was great to see her back and the uh, challenging for, for, for the All Ireland and 
to say there's plenty of women out there, plenty down in Cork actually, like they, they're they've a, a, a great young group of women down there that have kind of are climbing up the ranks and I've no doubt that they'll all be challenging for, for senior titles in the years to come. Be great Can I just ask you about, sorry Chrissy, yeah. Go ahead, no just <laughs> and j just the period after Kilbegan said the rest of June, July, leading up to leading up to the national match play. Just kind of how was your form in general those six weeks uh, leading up to the August weekend? Uh, well, I play in scratch cups. I use scratch cups uh, for for my practice. I play every weekend in scratch cups. I find them great co competition practice. I probably. I probably don't practice as much, well, I definitely don't practice as much as I used to say going back seven or eight years, I used to play every day, but with work commitments and personal commitments over the last few years, I, I kind of just get to play weekends if I play 18 holes on a Friday or Saturday uh, before a scratch cup, it's kind of, it's a bonus. But um, and say I, I played in all the scratch cups this year. Any any scratch cup that I could get my name down on, I I played in and entered, and um, I had great success in, in scratch cups there, uh, on the run up to <coughs> the match play itself. And I was I was playing I was playing very well. I was very calm, and uh, the fact that it was in Ryston, that it was local, that there was no travelling involved, um, I could get the I could get the odd game in. Of a Friday and Saturday, and um, before I play in a, in a scratch cup, but yeah, it, it was uh, it was a good lead. I was calm, cool, calm, and collected on the run up to it, and I was playing well. So I just took each game as 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 it came on the weekend itself, and thankfully I I came up trumps. You had no match on the first day. Obviously, it was only Sunday and Monday that you were playing. I suppose, kind of, how did you feel uh, going in and playing on, on, on the Sunday when, I suppose, a few others had managed to get games because of preliminary rounds? Yeah, well, I, I didn't actually mind. Um, I was I was happy to go in and watch uh, on, on, on the Saturday. And I, I went over, actually, to St. Bridget's to have a few... Um, to have a few shots on the Saturday evening after I was watching the games. So, um, yeah, I, I, I didn't mind that at all, to be honest. I enjoyed the watching watching the few games, the men's and the ladies. Um, and I was cool and calm coming in, playing um, Ailish on, on Sunday morning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And obviously, look, you won the quarterfinal, you get to Monday, you win the semi final. And then it's Breda. Uh, obviously, she'd lost the final to, to Martha in Arthur, in Arthur Park uh, last September, or to September before. And I suppose just obviously too, because the scheduling and the way it worked out that your final was, was last, um, the last game to finish, I suppose, which was a different pressure because of the, the amount of people that were actually physically watching out in the course uh, come the end of the match. Yeah. <coughs> We were unlucky in that the timing of our match coincided with the with the rain as well. So it, it kind of turned out to a kind of a dirty, difficult. It was a difficult playing time, um, but both of us played very well. Um, it, it was a very enjoyable game, and um, we I think we, we both had tough matches coming into it. Um, I played Ailish, who's a great competitor. Um, I then played Marta, which was she was defending champion. So um, that was a, that was a marvelous game. We we played high standard of pitch and put, and again it was the same with Tara in the semi final. So coming into the come to the final, I, I I felt I was playing well. I um I practiced a bit of my putting before the actual final itself against um, against Breda. Um, but but it was a great it was a great friendly final. It, it's always a pleasure to play. With and against Breda, she's um, she's a determined player. She never gave gives up, and um, I saw that in the last nine holes. Like I was, I was a few up coming into the last nine holes, and <coughs> I brought it back and got me, got me kept the game going to the 18th. Thankfully, I uh, I I pitched a good ball and I got the push to to win two up. I suppose, what, what were you feeling after she got the hole in one? I know kind of we spoke about this in more detail there on the Monday afternoon afterwards, but when you think back on the hole in one she got, 
and the, I suppose you did have two makeable putts that might that might have prevented it from going to the 18th. I suppose just kind of what were you thinking on the 18th box? Uh, I was quite nervous about the to be honest, Jason, playing the last few holes of that match, given that I I was beaten uh, three three out of the previous four years in the final, and the kind of most of went to the 18th anyway, so I was tentative. However, a calmness came over me on the 18th tee box. I, I just got up. I, I had a feeling that I was going to just pitch it, and uh, I, I rolled in the push, and... Yeah, it, it was great. It was it was it's a great feeling to to knock in that push and, and and win that sixth title. And I suppose look to win it in Kildare as well. I suppose obviously you the being to County and McDonough, you missed out at the very end. I suppose just just how how special was it to win to win to win your own county uh, alongside your own course? Yeah, it was it was brilliant, really. Like I had great support throughout the weekend from from uh, from my family and from the members of Ryston. So, like having that support is hugely beneficial when you are playing. Like when you hear the claps and the cheers, it, it it's massive. It gives you massive encouragement, and uh, I'm very appreciative of the support that I get from the Ryston club and the support I always get from my family, and no matter what championship I play in. So. It was huge to be able to win it um, in Ryston on my home course in front of the, the friendly crowd, so it was brilliant. And look, I suppose four years is probably a long time, but by your own standard, obviously, thinking back to Lakeside in 2015 when you beat Tara, Dylan, Vinyl back then. Um, I suppose, just as you said, did it kind of feel like the relief at the previous years? It was. I. I think. Um, it was. It was definitely a relief because I, I think you mentioned it to me before, Jason, that it was a bit of a monkey on my shoulder. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, thankfully getting over the line there, I think that monkey is well and truly gone. Mm-hmm. I suppose getting to, going to Tullamore then in September. Obviously, Jora's back. Obviously, she has. Obviously, she said to us back in September that she won't be playing a full circuit, obviously, with the condition she has at the moment. But I suppose, obviously, even though she'd been away for two years, to still see the competitive edge in her was, was probably a sight to behold. Yeah, it's always great to see her um, play in any championship. Um, it, it's great. We need, to, we need all the things we can to, to play in these championships to, to keep the, the spirit alive. It'd be great to see many more other great that have kind of hopefully temporarily left the championship circuit, <coughs> such as uh, Eleanor Walsh down in Like, it would be great to see her back, given that the, the stroke play is, is down in Fermoy next year. The likes of Siobhan Scanna, Marina Rourke and Clog. You know, my own two sisters, kind of, um, they made a comeback this year, and hopefully that will be a, a permanent stay for them. we see them um, next year in the championships and, and the championships going forward. I suppose obviously next year, like you mentioned, it's two trips to Cork for the two singles event. Obviously Douglas and Fermi are two very different courses in terms of their setup. I suppose would uh, as much as obviously trying to win them, will you will it be nice to hopefully put back on a Kildare shirt and, and wear and wear it next year playing? Absolutely. I'm really looking forward to, to going down to, to Douglas. It was the scene of my uh, stroke play win in two thousand and five. And as well as that, the Intercounty was there a number of years back. It's a course I actually really enjoy playing. It's difficult, it's challenging, but I really like it. And again, for my, I, I, won, I won the match play there. I beat Marion in the final in 2006. So that course uh, holds a special place in my heart as well. And Rock Lodge, going down for the Intercounty, it's always a pleasure to play there. It, it'd be great after the two-year break from Intercounty to, to down the white shirt again. So I think we all look forward to that and look forward to seeing all the teams out in, in their colours again next year. Uh, have you are you playing locally in the club these weeks at the moment or have you put the clubs away for the year? They were, they've been put away a little while now, Jason. I think I played once in October and I played in the Captain's Prize uh, in Ryston and a number of weeks back but it, hoping to get out maybe this weekend for a round to, to knock off the, the cobwebs again. 
And I suppose just one thing I want to ask you as well, I suppose it's very encouraging that the girls' championships are coming back as well, Chris. Obviously, you were talking about some of the senior players there in the ladies. Obviously, we had a very good girls' final in the match play between Ella Mine and, and Sarah Cooney that went all the way to the last hall in Glenville. And I suppose, again, an encouraging <coughs> entry for the, for the girls' throw playing rights. And I suppose that is encouraging as well as I suppose that there are some young players coming through now. They are, and Claire, especially uh, during the week from Ryston, has done great work with juveniles, both in Claire and our club. We have a number of um, excellent uh, young girls playing in in Ryston at the moment. I know there are some in 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 around Claire as well, and um, yeah, if they well, I I know they will stick stick with it because they, these girls are seriously committed. to to the game in Ryston and I know uh, Jertuhig is very encouraging to the to all the juveniles um, there and um, he's actually trying at the moment, which I think is a great idea is that he's trying to promote a, a girls inter-county team as well even if it's a, a case of um, different counties amalgamating to, to, to make a, a, a girls team. Even if we had two or three teams next year for um, a girls inter-county, I think it would be a wonderful thing to, to behold. Keep them yeah. interested. Certainly something to be looking for. After all, they are, they are the future of our game, so, yeah. Indeed, some, something very much to consider. Well, Chrissy, uh, I suppose I want to thank you for talking to us. Apologies again for the delay in getting you on at the start. <coughs> and I suppose congratulations to yourself and Declan one more. And we're looking forward uh, to, be called, to be called on the first tee box as Chrissy Sheedy next year. <laughs> Thanks a million, Jason. Thanks, Mark. Thanks very much. See Merry you. Christmas, Joe. Bye, Chrissy. Thank you. Bye. Right, so um, so yeah, great interview. Fair play. Great, 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 great to see Christine such great for. This fierce pressure on that too, and I'm not surprised the clubs have been put away for for a couple of weeks. To be fair. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um, Damien is nearly ready there. He just said he has the dog sorted. When he got the delay, the news of the delay, he went for a walk. <laughs> so he's he's ready to rock and roll. So we'll 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 try and get him into the call now. I hope this I will go. I want to apologise to our national audience and events. This turns into two Gary men denying the country. <laughs> you won't. Because the cork men will just shut down the two of you. <laughs> I, I, I mute the whole thing and I'll just talk over you. Here he is. We're just making a southwestern thing. Right. How are you, Mr. Fleming? How are we? Very, Very nice. good. Thank you for joining us. There we go. Um, That's the way I want this. I think um, maybe the first thing, Damien, I suppose you might just maybe show the cup uh, freshly cleaned and minted, obviously. And, and welded. Welded. Well, yeah. Fixed. Back to the state. Damien, I suppose firstly I want to start off with you. Obviously, um, in 2019 in Rock Lodge, when you won the match by that time and you got to host, you were the holder of two nationals at the one time, you got to Irish number one. Would have you believed that you held on to it, that you would still be holding on to this long? <coughs> I don't know how I held on to this long, Jason. I suppose. <laughs> It takes care of itself, I suppose. I was asked the question recently with the radio and Kerry. And, like, it takes care of itself, you know. Like Chrissy mentioned there, if you're consistent and if you just, you know, over the course of the year, if you just remain at a good level, the ranking points you take care of itself because it's kind of an unusual system, really, where if you are up near the top in the in the competition, you get rewarded quite highly. And then if you're, like, you could be four shots behind and there could be a difference of 150 ranking points, you know. So I suppose the gap can be quite, can become quite, um, Quite high, very, very quickly. Like so, um, I've been fortunate that I've been quite consistent in the last number of years in nationals, you know. So that has kind of that has helped really. Um, but no, as for staying there, <coughs> this is my third year in a row being at the, at the end of the season. No, that was like that's definitely not a target. Um, 
because it's not something you can really control, really, you know, the way the way it breaks down. But no, it's it's been nice to stay there, and I suppose it's a reflection on, I suppose, the work I'm putting in as, as much as anything else, Jason, and the kind of the consistent consistent level of performance I'm kind of putting in, which is which is always what I gained. I've interview, been interviewed years ago by Wishy. You probably remember this, and Wishy said to me about I, I think oh, I yeah. I think I finished like second, second, third or something in one year. And I remember saying to Wishy, I haven't won yet, like, but my aim is always to be competitive. And I think if you're competitive. Um, the results will eventually, you'll eventually get a few wins, you know, and I suppose, like, ideally, you, you, our aim, all of us go up there attention and winning, but we're playing in individual sports, so you're not going to win all the time, so I, I'm very much accepting that as well, you know. I know it probably wasn't the most memorable four players you ever had, Damien, back in June in St. Anne's, but ultimately, because of it, 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 it meant that you would be Irish number one for 2020 when it was finalised. Like, when you look back at it now, I know you were very upset. I've spoke to you about this before. That you were very upset with your putting that day, even though you, you were only three shot three shots away from the winning score. But do you kind of look back and say hands any more differently now? Say that. Say that is the course, or just on that day. <laughs> the 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 Be nice. I, I'm always arguing Ray Murphy to wish I'd never throw a draw, but I didn't give it anything for a throw draw that day. Um, no, I look just I. You know me, you know me as well as anyone knows, if you're honest. <coughs> St. Anne's was, uh, it was, it was a difficult one to take, to be honest, because I, I, like, I like St. Anne's, I used to play St. Anne's much better than that, and I like, fell under power after two, six holes. I know it was only three shots off, and you take nothing away from Shane in the day, but like it was a poor performance by me personally, you know, and that's all I can judge on, and I'm not judging anyone else's performance. Like, I could have played well if they lost by three shots, but I didn't play well, um, and I suppose, look, I worked hard from that, um, probably carried some of those putting mental scars, I would say, more than anything else, into Royston um, against Stephen, and probably took me a couple of couple of rounds in Royston to kind of get past that, and once I got past that, then I kind of, I think I kind of, once I, once I started putting, making a few at all, I think the, the rest of the year kind of took care of itself, but um, no, St. Anne's is a tough one to take, Jason, to be honest with you, like, I'm, it would, it, it, like there's no point in looking back at these. Look back, look back at Royston and look back at the other ones you won. But no, that's not me at all. Like I look at St. Anne's and I think that's one that, that I felt got away. You know, I definitely gave myself enough chances to be closer than what I was. You know, I was actually looking at your three weeks leading up to Royston, Damien. Um, you won the county straw playing carry out Newmarket. Um, then obviously in the national match play qualifiers, you had in Deer Park, and then the Schley Scratch Cup. Um, you were last out in comp- compact to John March, I suppose, just in terms of three competitive week- weekends leading up to the national match play, were, were there three good weeks to have? It's hard to qualify. <laughs> it's hard to qualify. We were down in Deer Park, I really felt all the pressure to get out of, get out of Killarney that day. Um, you know, look, I'm not, I'm not someone that, that needs competition, Jason, realistically, you know, I've, I've never been someone that loves playing scratch cups, it's just not me, like, you know, um, I'll always support the Kerry's catch up, so from that point of view, Tralee was there was never a choice. I was always going to go down there. Um, but I've never, I could never say that I, I started the year going, I want to win this catch up, I want to win that catch up. Um, I, I like, I, I'd say to be honest with you, if it wasn't for Aidan Kavanagh, I probably wouldn't play any scratch cups. <laughs> but he kind of gets on to his normal, I go playing certain ties and that kind of stuff. And I, I enjoy it when I'm there, but I've never. I never go out there thinking I have to win this or you know. So it's it's a competitive, it's a card in the back pocket. But like my attitude is that I should be able to, and I think we all should be able to go up to like I go up to Rock Lodge. We well able to go up to Rock Lodge on a, on a Tuesday night, and if if you need to get your game right, you shouldn't need a card in your pocket to be able to do that. You know. So competition doesn't really. I don't. I've never felt something that um I need to kind of keep myself sharp. To be honest, with you. I know some people like I know Mick Forrest, Ray Murphy. They've always said to me, "Ask oh, cups or." Keep keep your eye in, like they always say that. But like, nah, for me personally, like maybe that's because if I lived in Cork all my life, it could be very different. I suppose because you grew up with a scratch cups world, like every weekend, and like it was it was really kind of part of the scene. But in Kerry, like we got had four or five scratch cups growing up, um, and like realistically, like they were nearly impossible to win because you had Derry baiting us out the gate, and every one of them. But then you had Jason Regan baiting. I'd say Jay has won more scratch cups in Kerry than anyone, and like it was. Um, so it was never really something that I classified. So like leading up to the match play, it's thirty six holes, but like you can't you can't prepare for the match play. Like like that Saturday, that Sunday in the match play is that's like nothing anyone will ever experience. Like unless you've actually done it, um, I honestly 
don't know how many times Ray Murphy has done it, but the amount of times that man has done that, like he should be given some sort of a plaque. Like it's mm-hmm. it's an absolute like the standing picture book goes out the window, like it's it's really just he has to get through it, you know. Come Saturday evening, there Sunday evening you're you're running on empty for for a lot of those games. Like you're you're just looking to get get out and get to, get to Monday morning if you can, you know. I suppose look it's well known now obviously about your game <coughs> Stephen Shore and the situation you found yourself in and the sixteen T box. Mm-hmm. I suppose do you think if you had to play another game that day that you might have struggled that at least when when the match was over that you had a full a full night to think can't contemplate about how close it actually was? Uh I don't think so, Jess. I just I just got three in a row and I got another jail. So I was on an, I was a, I'm actually so I think Someone, someone said to me, "Can go. It could have gone two ways. I'd like to have gone again because I suppose I wasn't happy with how we played. But like, you, can, it can go two ways. You can be absolutely buzzing, and you can go. You can absolutely play out your skin, or you could be just completely drained from the emotion of actually getting out of jail. You know. Um, I don't know. It's, it's a tough one to call. I suppose like it's a long way to get to, to Sunday morning when your first game out on the Saturday. You know, so it is. It is the long way to get around there. And I always find that first round of the match play quite tricky. I don't know why. Um, so if you look at my record, I've lost more than I've won it, and I probably have only really, when I have won, I've kind of scraped over the line. Like I've never actually had a comfortable first round in that national match event, you know. Just giving everyone kind of points for next year, I know they'll all be watching my Hawks and Douglas. But, um, <laughs> no, I, I definitely, I, I suppose. Look, it was good to get away. I suppose the good things, well, I to sit back and watch a few of the Kerry lads and watch a few of the other matches and stuff like that, which is, which is good, you know. So it's it's good from that point of view. Um, <clears throat> But yeah, I suppose I would have liked to have kept going, yes, and like play the second round of the Saturday. I think would be probably my preference in in reality to avoid playing three rounds on the Sunday. But um, look, it, it is what it is. I suppose I knew I couldn't. I knew I had one shot left, and I look. I was fortunate to come out. I was very fortunate to come out of that game. To be honest, there's no there's no doubt about it. I'd say if you if you talk to Stephen Shore, I'd say Stephen Shore was. Uh, I'd say he was sick going home that day, to be honest with you. And then rightly so, he, he, he beat me off the gate. There's no doubt about it. I, I let him back into the match and, and he took his opportunity and I just sank a good put 16, which is unusual for me, the way I was putting on that particular day. Um, I think in my speech after I attributed that down to Ray Murphy, um, Ray kind of spotted something that I wasn't quite doing right with the putting, said it to me. Um, and to be honest with you, the rest was kind of history really after that. You know, I kind of felt after that I, I really got into his own and the game against James Cleary, I kind of felt the way I played against James. Um, after the way I played against James, I, I, I knew it'd be hard to beat after that. To be fair, like, like confidence is an awful thing in this game, you know. And if you get a bit of a run at all, I knew it would be tough to beat. It helps as well, Jason. Obviously, if you've won it before, you know that, that definitely helps an awful lot. Yeah. I suppose the score lines you won by on Sunday, obviously, we won't go through game by game, but the score lines you won by on Sunday weren't necessarily, I'd say, bar one, weren't necessarily. Yeah, uh, blitzes by any means. Like you, you, you were leading and more comfortable, but like I'm never quite <coughs> enough. The players yeah, were like playing. Like, <coughs> so like, <laughs> that's a, that's as much those players I was playing as me. To be honest with you, know, I am. Um, yeah, I can't. I can't remember much. I know. I think I played James Foley in the morning, and it, it, admittedly, it wasn't the best game either troops would have played. But um, it was just a game you kind of had to win. And then against James, we both played well, and against Peter, we both played well. So, like, I, I know I, there might have been much in the matches, but that was as much a reflection on, on us playing well. It wasn't that I couldn't shake them off. I think they we they, they played exceptionally. I think after 13 hours, James Cleary was nearly was he 10 under power. I think he hit 10 greens, he made 10 putts. Um, so, I suppose, from that perspective, like, it's it's it wasn't like... I, I know I went up early in balls with matches, and I don't think I need, I was down two after 13 against James, what I can recall, and then I kind of got back to turn two up, and I, I never fell behind after that. And against Peter, I'd say Peter, like Peter, he threw absolutely everything at me that day. Like, I don't know how, like, he played, like, he, I wouldn't say he played like a man possessed, but he, and I, he definitely didn't play, I suppose, better than what he can play, because I suppose I've seen Peter play as juvenile. I remember playing Peter won the county with Park above in St. Patrick's, so I'd say back about 2007, Mark, my friend, here, 2007, 2008, and Peter was an exceptional juvenile, and I like, you know, so all Peter's doing now is really kind of, he's playing at the level that he has, I suppose, promised for years, you know, and I think it's great to see because that's that's what keeps the game going when you have different players coming through and 
and new blood, you know, and it, it look as much you know as the case may say, it's better for Cork as well that they have a couple of new people coming through because I think that strengthens their their own rock lads definitely next year to make them harder and harder to beat because like if you look at the, the names in Cork that have been dominating for years, it is great to see a couple of new new names coming through and Peter definitely is one of them. And the way he played that the if he if he keeps anywhere near that level up, it's only a matter of time before Peter wins in a national. Just on Monday, Damien, obviously, I know we spoke uh, more detail about this uh, after you won, but <coughs> you won, you played with such confidence on Monday for the occasion, so I was obviously playing the local favourite and hoping Ian Dillon in the semi-final, and then to beat Ray with all his successes, I suppose, were you happy that you you took the two challenges so well and, and, and did win by the scores that they were after? Yeah, I know, I'm not sure home advantage stands for much at this level, Jason. I know that might sound silly to say that, like, but like, that's like saying you go to a scratch cup up the country and the same fellow wins it every year. It doesn't work like that, you know. I think at this level, like, I don't think Ian was going in there thinking he had a three or four-hole advantage of the playing on Ryston. Um, at this stage, we've all played these courses on more than one occasion. Um, you know, if they came out through a match, it might be different. But, but like, up there, definitely on that particular day. I suppose, look, I knew I had an advantage... I, I know that might sound silly. I thought I had a bit of an advantage because the pressure was on him, really. Because, like, although I didn't think home advantage was going to be a big difference, I felt he might feel it a little bit more because everyone, like, at the end of the day, everyone that was there wanted Ian to win. I know that. Um, same as they wanted Chris to win. And I, I completely accept that, you know. Like, I just played the Irish Open in Deer Park, and there wasn't many people there wanted um, Frank Deneen to beat me that day, you know. So, like, at the end of the day, I, I accept that. But I, I was just, my God, I came out of the blocks like a train in, in, in the semi final. I, although Ian came back at me, which again at this level you'd expect that. Like uh, there was probably a time when that would have probably impacted on me in some level, but not anymore. And I suppose I, I feel like moved on my game to a certain degree from, from that point over the years. Um, so yeah, like it was it was a, it was a great match. Like I think the scoring was quite good. You probably know a bit more scoring more than I do, but at the end of the day, like Ian played exceptional pitch and put him back for the end. Probably we probably both would have won the other semi final, and that's no disrespect to the other semi final. We probably both would have won the other semi final. Um, but look, I was, you were always fast to get or just semi final is all about winning, Jason. Like, it's the better any sport, yeah, just yeah. get to the semi final stage, you, just <coughs> change, you know. Um, I've been fortunate, I think I've been in four semi finals, um, and I've happened to win all four of them, you know, that won't happen forever. I'll eventually, if I keep getting them, hopefully I will, I'm eventually going to lose a few, and that's okay too, you know. And look, I suppose, obviously, Damien, the fr- you you three match play titles now, it puts you in a different bracket in terms of the conversation. I know you said to me that. You don't have to think about that until you've fi- finally put up the clubs for good. But I suppose at this stage to have won three match plays, what sort of a feeling is it? I'd have taken one. <laughs> Not going to lie, I'd be quite happy with one. Um, do you know, James, I, 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 that's a song silly. Like, I... I see some people. My name isn't on that cup yet for the for this year. Like I'm not. That's not how I operate. Like it's look. It's it's. I I trade them one yeah, and roughly six of them one. Like I got the Rays at home. Say counting how many match plays he's won. You know, like you, you're thinking about the next one. Like and I know Ray's probably at home tonight thinking about Douglas because he's qualified and if his name's in the hat. He's going to be tough to beat. You know, no, he's not doing much at home, but he's at home. And at the end of the day, he probably um. He's watching. He's, he's the, the, the benchmark at the end of the day, you know. He's the target is to reach what Ray has won. Ray has won six. I've all, I've made, I, I know that probably puts a bit of an added pressure on myself to say that, but like, obviously, I'd love to match Ray's records if I could. Um, and I suppose like that's all we can keep doing. Keep keep. I mean, if you keep performing in him, Jason, like you know, you, you never know you have a chance. You know, like it, uh, yeah, it's great to have won three. Um, in reality, I probably played far better in the stroke list than the match plays, and I won stroke plays. You know, so. Um, like I think I haven't finished, so I had the top six in the last six or seven stroke plays, and I've only won one of them. So I suppose, in a way, on paper, you probably think I should have more stroke plays won. <clears throat> um, but like, there's like there's all the, the thing with this game. Like I could take out that cup there and start reading out names. You like there's there's always someone to shoot you down, like you know. So like we keep trying to do what we can. Just treat them there, right there. But like we want to think about that. I and I genuinely want to think about that until until I feel I can't win anymore, and hopefully that's not for a while yet. You know. I want to talk to you about Evan, about Nevin and a different man named Dean. Um, I suppose, obviously, we heard his perspective on it back in September. Obviously, like you regret first 36 holes, it actually looks like he's about to win it ahead of you, but he misses those two putts. You end up with a putt on the last to get a playoff. Like, did it feel a bit surreal that you were even in the, sta- in the stage to get a playoff with everything else that was happening in that final 18 holes? I, I think I, I'm looking at Mark no, but I think I met Mark 
and the fifteenth. We're going to put the fifteenth one. Out. Is that the one over the water? Fifteenth, is that the one? or is that the sixteenth? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, the one down over the water, Damien. Picture. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And Max said, Max said, what's the story? And I think at the time I was two behind or something. I was nowhere near. But I remember giving Max all the scores one after the other. He was very more impressed with the fact that I could give him all the scores and I could anything else. Like at the end of the day. I don't look at Navin as one that I've lost, to be honest with you, because I suppose the, what I take from Navin is the fact that I needed to board the last, which is not an easy hole in Navin, and I boarded the last. Um, look at playoffs, anything can happen in a playoff at the end of the day, which is like I hit one poor pitch, um, which was down to myself not committing to it, and Ian, Ian took advantage, and at this level that would happen, and look, if you told me at the start of the year I was going to finish first and one, I was going to finish second and the other, I'd beat your head off it, you know, so... Obviously, I think everyone would love to win the double, but there's only there's a reason why there's only three people have ever done it. Um, it's not that easy to do, you know. So if it was that easy to do, we'd all be doing it. So I'm still looking at my, what I would take on. I remember meeting Ray Murphy years ago, and I know we, we set a lot of our standards, but people should set their standards on what Ray has done and if they don't. <coughs> they need to re- reassess where they're going. But I remember meeting Ray in Lakewood. He probably doesn't remember this for about 10, 15 years ago. And I remember he was after winning a Cork County Stroke player match. He got about nine or ten in a row to win it. He just something crazy to, to actually get over the line and I remember just saying to him what, how in the name of Christ do you do that you know do you just year after year after year just when it has to be done you do it you know and I think that's the most pleasing thing about Navin that when I had to birdie the last I birdie the last you know like okay Ian missed a couple of putts but as Ian said himself he hit a good putt in the 18th that didn't drop um, he went into the playoff quite confident as well he just shot 29 under for three rounds like you know people might think that's, that's not easy to do you know on any course no? so, be happy, yeah. um, it was a, a bit of a lottery after that you know and I know Ian got a people would say oh he got a bit of a break in the, the fifth or the sixth in the playoff but like at the end of the day that, that's what happens like I'm sure if I count it back over my side <coughs> you know that day I got plenty of breaks as well you know and they all even themselves out and look um, you won't take nothing away from Ian like it was his time to win one Barry Morrissey said that to me Damien everyone was trying to win one and that was Ian's time to win one and, and fair play to him you know, and I hope he enjoyed every second of the celebrations you know but um, he was there to be shot at now next year um, I suppose well Damien like you you did the county double as well in Kerry obviously beating Aidan Connor in the match play final in Castle Island it's not an achievement you've done a lot obviously I know you have won counties but it, I think it's only something you might have done once before in winning the two counties at Gary in one year. I think I'd more national match plays than county match plays, just for, prior to that yeah. county match play, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'm not registering Cork now before Mark asks me, but I suppose the, the reason. Yeah. <laughs> the, there was a time I probably wasn't going down to play in the county, Jason, but to be honest with you. And that, like, that's, that was a bit disrespectful on my part that I, that I wasn't prioritising counties. Um, and I, I suppose my outlook changed a few years ago. No, the boys, the boys in Kerry might be happy to hear me say that. But my outlook changed a few years back, saying I was going to prioritise counties in the course of the year as well. Like, and like I probably did. I probably only prioritised nationals. Like literally, that was all I wanted to to play well in over the course of the last five or six years. And then the last two or three years, probably the first time ever that I prioritised this county was in 2019 when I knew I needed to win it to stay number one in the country and that was probably the first time ever that I really put focus on winning a county um, they're not easily won I know people think oh sure like I know if you look at the betting for a national stroke play you would see I think in, in Navin was like 92 and every other Kerry fellow was like 100 to 1 so that's that's ludicrous like like I I, I guarantee you I I struggled to come out of Kerry for a national match play. I think five lads beat me down in Killarney um, on that particular day and I, I went up to Rice that they were all a bigger price than me in the, in the competition like that doesn't make sense at all like I think as much and all as I was probably disrespecting the counties I think there was probably a little bit of disrespect regarding some of the players I know I understand the betting people say oh at the end of the day only certain people can win when it comes to that level but there are an awful lot of good players and like I think um, like, you, you know this yourselves like it, it there's, there's a small gap between being winning a national and being a very 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 good senior there's, there's a very small gap you know and Every year people are going to come through. We've got some players on Kerry there that's like it's only a matter of time. Like Jason Cregan is is consistently playing super pitching, but he's up to, like I think they're top twenty five in the rankings. He's consistently playing super pitching, but no. Alan Hobart, I think that Alan was I right thinking Alan did Alan make the final round of the or was one of them made the final mm-hmm. round of the straw play. Um mm-hmm. like they're playing they're starting to play top top pitch and put, you know, and like if these lads start to get a bit of self belief with and that's all it is, Jason, it's self belief. Like you get that bit of self belief, um like a prime example, a prime example is I told him I was going to do this, and so I'm going to do it anyway. Prime example is is, is Evan Curry up up in Mead, you know. Evan has absolutely battered the living daylights out of people above and Navin over the last two or three years. 
And for some reason, when it came to the National Show Play, it's like he didn't believe he could actually go and win the National Show Play. I believed he could win the National Show Play. Everyone else believed he could win the National Show Play. When, when Evan gets that self-belief, I'd say we're all in trouble because that young fella has got unbelievable potential. Now, I told him I was going to do this, so he's, he's aware it's going to happen because he's having to take the mickey out of me before I rang in. So, like, he... He's just one example of, of a player that, like, that just these young fellas are coming through. They're, they're, they don't see any fear. Like, I remember when I was 17 or 18, I saw Ray Murphy. Ray Murphy was never on the way from, you know. Now, like, it's these young fellas don't see any fear. They, they, like, what Peter did in Ryson is, is living proof that there's a very, very small gap between being a very good senior and being a top senior, you know. And the, there's more and more lads coming through, you know, the, 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 like the likes of myself, John John, Ray. Um, like, you, you see it, like, all oh, these fellas, we're, we're not, we're not. We're not, we're not, we're not unbeatable, like you know, far, far from it. You know, I, for years I had the same belief, thinking, oh, these lads can't be beat. I'm like, the first, the first I, remember, I beat um, Jason O'Regan in a county match play semi-final. Well, actually, Jay beat himself because he was soccer on the last. Had to mention that, but I remember that was the first time ever that I thought, actually, maybe I could actually play at this level. And then I beat Derry, and that was a huge thing in my brain. And then I remember beating Frank O'Donoghue up in. Uh, Collins in a month's match play semi final thing got absolutely hammered by the knee in your eyes every time you see him. But I remember being Frank Goodenough. And I remember they, they were little steps, like they were just small things. I, I was ticking things off my list, you know. And I, I firmly believe you have to earn you have to earn your stripes, you know. You have to it's it's a game. Like Barry Morrissey has always said it, it's true. Like you you eventually get to that stage where <coughs> you have to you hit the boxes, you know. I think twenty eleven when I won in Collinstone was an absolute and I say this hand and heart, it was an absolute fluke. That that shouldn't have happened. I was not in my own brain ready to win a national. Um, I got very lucky. I played very good for three days, and like I don't get me wrong, I take nothing away from it. But I wasn't at the stage where I was ready to kind of compete every time I played in the national. Um, whereas now I feel when I when I go to a national, I'm I'm ready to compete in every single one of them. And I, I feel like that's 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 all anyone should aim for. But like these young lads coming through, I know they'll probably come back to haunt me, but they should really have just believe in themselves. Don't don't for a second think that like what winning a national is, is unattainable. Anyone can win a national race if they put if they put in the effort. And it's not a case of just going out and practicing seven or eight nights a week or just putting all these rounds in. You practice the right things, you know. If you improve your game, focus on on your your, your strengths and your weaknesses, and and practice them. You know, don't just go up there and hit the ball and, and hope for the best. You know, work on things. And, if you do that, and if you actually get a bit of self belief, um, I tell you, like, a national is very, very attainable. You know, like, it's it's not a million miles. And I suppose I was very fortunate when I moved to Cork. Um, I started playing a lot of pitch but rock and they've been very, very good to me. But at the time, they had a lot of national champions, associate members. Mark will, Mark will know this, and I <laughs> ended up playing a lot of pitch but Ray Murphy. And I remember going over Ray on a Monday night, and I would beat Ray silly around the course and I was thinking this fella is not that good at all and then we go on a Sunday and I'd be looking at him in the final rounds and I'd be watching and I remember thinking what's going on here you know, something. but like you, you, I learned from that you know I learned from watching Ray and, and, and realising that you can't go up there and play well every single day of the week you know I remember the, I played in Navin I'd say about six weeks before Navin with Evan and Sean, I checked no, I was in Castle Town with Shawnee, but I play with Evan above there. And Evan, I'd say, I think they were in 10 shots of them. And the gods on the street think they were in 10 shots of them. But what he, what he didn't realize is I was learning from him. I was learning breaks and I was learning little bounces. And I, I, was, I was watching what he was doing. Like, it, like you can learn from anyone. I remember played, I played out in Bishopstone with John Tracy. And John was like, oh, you can learn nothing from me. And I was like, you can learn from everyone, John. And I was learning bounces around Bishop's song because John knew the bounces. And like, that's what you have to do. Like, and if you do that, eventually your time will come. Every single person you see it, everyone, you see it all the time. I remember when I was going back, what's that young lad was, um, <coughs> oh, from Clay Castle. He was, did he get to the quarterfinal above in Cashel here? Chris Scannell won the, the match play. He was in the intermediate at the time. Yes, I didn't play the game anymore, but I remember thinking, they were all thinking, oh, he's going to get beat here, this fellow's going to beat him, that fellow's going to beat him. Dear Mark, before I got rest and beat Janine. Um, like, you, it's, you, can, you can beat, like, a, a national match play is, a stroke play is way harder to win. Way harder to win. Mm-hmm. National match play is just one match at the end of the day. Like, just, not, God, I'm just uh, my brother is desperate for looking at draws, and oh, you're playing this fellow, if you beat that fellow, and I, like, we beat that fellow, and no, we'll worry about the next fellow after, because 
Nine times out of ten, it doesn't work out the way it's meant to work out, you know. And, like, it's very unusual you get the four seeds in the semi final, and it never mm-hmm. works out like that, you know. So, very rare. Um, yeah. take, take one game at a time, and like, I think over 36 holes, any senior can beat any senior. I, I firmly believe that, you know. And that's probably what got me in Collins Stone 2011. I literally just focused on my match. Um, and I was very fortunate at the time. I, I remember I beat Ray in a very good quarter final, and Patrick McBride. I'd say play the game of his life against John Walsh and beat John Walsh in the other quarter final and I would have been playing John Walsh in the semi final and that would have been a, not but that would have been a, at the time that would have been a mm. totally different animal of a game than Patrick McBride. No disrespect to Patrick McBride, but it was yeah. the first time the two was ever in the semi final, so it was whoever managed the narrow best was probably going to get through the match. Yeah, right. Whereas if I was playing John John, I'd have probably be shaking like a leaf and he'd have probably just went away and absolutely steamrolling me. But he, you know, that's the way the match play works out, you know. Damien, sorry, Jace. Just, Jace, just there's, there's, a, there's, there's an interesting there. question came in there from Martin Hobbit. No, I know that I know the answer to this, but we'll go through. It. Would Damien Rotter match Ray Murphy's uh, nationals record or win an inter county with Kerry? Inter county, all yeah, I knew that because I, I, I heard you a couple of weeks ago. All day long. And Padraig McNally wants to know what's your practice routine like. Takes about twenty five to thirty five minutes anyway on a Monday night in Rock Lodge. Tell him ring in tell him ring in Canada. <laughs> ring um, the coach. <laughs> it, it's yeah, man, I suppose like, obviously it's gonna be unique. It's strange to say that you could predict like obviously the twenty eighteen Inch County was in Deer Park, that was home advantage in one respect. The, obviously the fact it's going to Rock Lodge it'll feel like home advantage in a different respect. Yeah. Well, well, and well, look, I, I've already spoken to the new chairman in Rock Lodge, and I don't think we're accepting him next year, so he can go away. Like, <laughs> 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 I know. I'll ring the lady. Oh yeah. Um, oh, and you you said mentioned something a while ago. How many how many times Murphy had done um, the Sunday got through the quarterfinals? Murphy's been in fourteen semifinals, like so. That's yeah. And and no. When you t- but when you think of it the way you put it, he got through that Sunday fourteen times. That that, that sounds that's unbelievable. Like no one, no one trees knees. <laughs> Ash, it's brand new now. He's flying, and he's and I, I got it. He's watching by the way. So. <laughs> Damien, um, I know there's one other thing. Obviously, mentioned in the county, there is probably one other thing you want, and that is to put on an Irish jersey. Um, I suppose. Well, obviously, we have to wait and get confirmation about the camp, about the World Cup next year. But I suppose what would it mean to obviously look? I know some of the people in Kerry that have worn it. Obviously, Derry McCarthy, Conor McCarthy, Killian Courtney, Jonathan Goodall has put it on as well. I suppose just how much would it mean to put on an Irish jersey? Um. There's no point in saying otherwise. I prefer to win it in the county, Jay, so let's get that out there. Let's get to make that very clear. Go back to Mark's question. I prefer to win it in the county over absolutely anything in, the, in this world. Um, but yeah, no, it would, <coughs> it would be nice. I'm not saying that it's going to be something. I'm not going to sat up next year and think, oh, you know, I, I want to make the Irish team. It, it's like, If I make it, I make it. If I don't, I don't. I can't. I can't. Honestly, it's not something you could set as a target, Jason, because there's a lot, there's a lot of pitch to be played between here and then. There's a lot that has to happen. There's there's a, there's a lot of at the end of the day, I think there's only two spots up for grabs. Um, and yeah. like at this level of pitching foot, it's not easy to always finish in the top two. Um, so you know, like let's 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 go in, let's play for the year. If we can hold the ranking position and if we can and perform well, but like I'd be the first to say, Jason, if, if I don't perform well next year, and well then I don't deserve to play in the Irish team. You know, that's the reality. You want your three best players going over there at the end of the day. Like, you don't want some fellow going over there because he played well in 2021. You want some fellow going over there playing well because he's playing well at that given time. And, and that could be, that could be like anyone. Like, I know JR, I'd say, would would give his right hand to go over and, and play. He'd been playing for three years in a row, like, to play. He played the last two, I think, AM Gibbon. Did AM Gibbon play the last two as well? No, just he, yeah, 2016. He played in 2016. Yeah. Like, yeah. And I think yeah. John 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 has won the last yeah. two as well. So yeah. like, they're like these these lads like these lads are gonna be champing at the bit to try and go out there and defend. Like they absolutely they want to defend defend the world title as well. Um and that's a lot like Brian Delaney is gonna be back to full health next year. Mm-hmm. Um Ray Murphy. With, it, with a new knee, yeah, yeah. 
Anything we're stuck, we're stuck in the beat right on one leg. It's the same as bad. Like, we're stuck in the beat on one leg. People don't realise that. We're has been going on one leg for about six or seven years and we're stuck in the beat. Um, so, like, there's a lot. Like, isn't, like, we just mentioned Peter. Like, there's, there's plenty of young lads coming through. There's a lot of still top lads like Chris Gannon who played so pitch about there on, all year long. John Cahill is still around. There's still a lot of great, great players playing pitch about, you know. And, like, it, to get on an Irish team in itself is like winning a national. Like that's the reality, the standard pitch foot you have to play to get on it. It all depends like what kind of tries play, where, where it's on. If Ireland's in the team, I don't know, it might sound silly, but if it's on in Chile, it might be something to be considering. Um, like there's a lot of pitch foot you've played next year, Jason. Like there's this whole new pitch and port tour they're trying to start up and things like that. Like, and I don't know, like it's, like it's commitment wise and all that kind of stuff. Like my preference would always be to go and play in nationals and try and do well in those. And like I'm not looking beyond Douglas, really. That's my next target. I'm very fast that I don't have to qualify for him next year because that's usually the hardest thing for us to get over Kerry. Um, I, I don't want to, I can't say I don't want to not answer Patrick McNally's question to be honest with you. But like my <laughs> my practice is always very simple. I didn't think people don't realize it's one ball. I never have two balls. But even in playing a national, there's never two balls. It's one ball. Um, it's generally putting from three to four feet until I, I remember Willie Park who got rest of them always said make ten in a row. Um, I gone past me trying to make ten in a row and I usually put until I miss um, when I am putting then I'll have to note the back and practice to put in green. And and pitching it's it's usually I, I, I try and hit greens when I'm practicing and I kinda of come to many greens. I I, I talked to Jason Creek in the last week we were talking about stats and that kind of stuff. I probably keep the stats for ten years in my own game regarding how many greens I hit and how many greens I missed and how many puts I make and that kind of stuff. Um, and that's why I did five years ago my putting was very, very poor. Matt will be the first to tell you that, he still tells me. Um, that my putting was very, very poor and I spent a lot of money to get a putting green out the back with the view of trying to improve my putting and I suppose um, that might sound silly to some people because we're playing pitch and hook but it's it's all I play, it's what I want to play, I want to I wanna play well. I make no qualms of saying that I, I would absolutely love to win more nationals um, but if I only win four, right, and that'll do me. Um, I don't think I'll get to play the Irish Open next year straight out about it looking at the dates um, I think we're away that week um, and the kids haven't been away so long I ain't going to turn around and say we're not going so um, the Irish Open won't be on my calendar next year I'd say unfortunately um, so it will be the nationals the, the provincials and the counties and if the Irish team is, is part of that we'll then look once I get the blessing from Sharon we'll be on the plane if we can make the team Damien it's, thank it's you very about, much for joining us it's, it's about three planes uh, Damien <laughs> <laughs> it's it's about three planes. I think there's three different planes to get to that place. <laughs> yeah. We'll manage that too. We'll be here to see give it a time off. Oh. <laughs> Would they give us a bit of sponsorship? <laughs> Damien, um thanks very much for joining us this evening. Congratulations again on your year. We wish you a Merry Christmas. I will personally see you on Sunday when rumour has it the club and the county board are going to make it presentation yes. so I say one thing one thing Jason we wish McGrath yeah. happy birthday he's 40 today and yes also c- congratulations to Christy and Declan as well because I'm gone off Facebook so I don't see those things anymore so congratulations to Christy and Declan mm-hmm. and, and, and I see it was no speedy recovery to Ray as well you know right. um, mm-hmm. it's not easy when he's yeah. recovering from so wish him the best for that uh, are you gone off Facebook so voluntarily or is it because we were put off no I'm gone off Facebook voluntarily <laughs> <laughs> I go back on in the summer to there's a comment so there's a know. comment here from Anthony Kelly um, and Anthony says he sounds like a nice lad always the sign of a great champion there you go now that's nice I learned, I learned, I learned, I learned from the best owner in Kerry to be honest like Kerry, so <laughs> Kerry, Kerry wouldn't want it any other way so, so we, you, you learned how to be nice in Kerry you learned how to be nice in uh, Kerry and you came to Cork to learn how to be cutthroat ah, yeah. I get you you're, you're cute alright Damien <laughs> Damien, thank you very much, and we hopefully will talk to you again in 2022. Yeah, Cheers, well, Damien. Bye, Mark. Bye, bye. Okay, everyone. Uh, just just before we go, um, just Mark, uh, as we mentioned, <coughs> we were trying to send up the call initially. Just a couple of small fixture items uh, before I finish up. Mark, obviously, the provincial fixture list was published on Tuesday, and just as well on the the Intercup Championship. I know yourself. Uh, Michael and Michael Murphy and Miles McGuire have been working on something. Just, just maybe give us a small update in the Interclub. Yeah, just uh, the Interclub. Look, we were wondering what to do with the Interclub because, you know, 
anyone that takes part loves the competition but the one complaint was it was going on over so many weeks and months with the qualifying and everything so the plan was before we went into lockdown was we were going to have it over one weekend a saturday and sunday you'd have stroke play qualifying on the saturday morning and then you'd play off uh, your quarterfinals and semi semi-finals and final on the sunday and we were looking at dates and we've managed to rejig around probably uh, to the end of may there's a weekend in the end of may we've rejigged um and hopefully that's the interclub if the interest is there the interclub will go ahead at the end of may we have a sponsor for it and everything so um you know so look i i, I hope to take this look anything that gives us more competition particularly for clubs rep look damien is animal there you represent your county you can represent your country but when you represent your club against fellas you play with fellas you play a turkey four ball with or an ordinary four ball with every sunday morning or whatever that's a different story we all know that it's it's club county country we we understand the way it works you know and they, so hopefully hopefully there'd be a, a good interest in that you know particularly with you know you'd have qualifying on the saturday morning and get down to the last eight or whatever you have and then you go into your match play situation Um the other one you know the the, the just to, it wasn't quite decided and didn't go up but the, the secondary schools will be running again uh, uh, mm -hmm. in, in 2022, yeah. so, you know, for the juveniles, so that'll be good as well. Mm -hmm. Well, Mark, I suppose <coughs> that, uh, if I want to thank you again personally for hosting this tonight. I want to thank Damien and Chrissy for being so forthright in their thoughts and speaking to us so eloquently tonight. Uh, just to say as well that hopefully in the new year we will be doing something with our uh, outgoing president, Marvin Cooney, and John Manning uh, prior to convention. We look forward to that as well. But just for the moment, I suppose from us all in Ashton, we'd like to wish all our members and our patrons a uh, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you very much, Mark. Thanks, Jason. Cheers. Bye-bye.